we promised latent view analytics, reported its third quarter numbers, the revenue growth slowed down, but the company also saw sequential expansion in the margins. We have Rajan Seturaman, who's the CEO of the company, joining in to discuss more on the numbers in detail. Thanks a lot, Rajan, for joining in. And, you know, on both the revenue as well as the margin front is the question, because the last time you did say that margins can expand to all the way up to 25%. Are you on, uh, uh, you know, course for that? And as far as the revenue growth is concerned as well, what is it that you can guide for? Yeah, hi, good morning, and uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, yeah, the margin expansion is on track. I had indicated that there'll be a two, three quarter kind of a time frame in which we will get back to the 25% margin kind of a, uh, a number. And uh, as you can see from uh, the margins that we have had in Q1, Q2, Q3, we have continued to move in the right direction. We had uh, margins of 22.2 for the current quarter. At this point in time, based on the visibility that we have, for the quarter four and therefore for the full year, I would say that we are on track. I don't think we will get to the 25% margin by the end of this uh, quarter itself, but uh, the trajectory is in the right direction. All right, hi Rajan, good morning and good to see you. When uh, So by which quarter do you get to this 25% margin, if you could give us a broad range out there? And also, you know, in quarter three, the growth rates have uh, tapered off. The indications were that we'll likely see a pickup in quarter three. Be that as it may, for quarter four, how's, how are things looking? Will quarter four better be better than quarter three? And for the year, that's FY24, FY25, what kind of a growth number are we looking at? Right. So I don't think the, the growth rate has tapered off. I mean, uh, I had indicated that uh, quarter three uh, growth rates will uh, be a little better than quarter two. And uh, that's what uh, we have seen. Uh, at this point in time, the visibility we have for uh, quarter four is that, uh, again, the growth rate in quarter four should be better than the growth rate that we have had uh, in Q3. I'm talking about the quarter-on-quarter -quarter hmm. growth rates. Uh, on the first question, we had made a certain set of uh, investments uh, about 12 months back. And uh, because of the macroeconomic scenario, we are seeing that uh, the investments are taking more time to pay off. The current level of investments is uh, with keeping in mind a $25, $26 million run rate from a quarterly standpoint in terms of uh, revenue. When we get to that number, uh, again, our margins uh, should get back to the 25% uh, EBITDA range. We're expecting that uh, this will take about a couple of quarters for us to get to that run rate. All right, so about Q2 of next financial year, between Q2 yeah. and Q3 of next financial year, Rajan. But, you know, you did say that you are expecting better quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth in Q4 itself. So, you know, that trend comes up for you. QOQ, uh, first quarter grew 4.7%, second quarter grew around 5.4%, the third quarter 6.4%. What is this fourth quarter likely to be? Is it 7.5, 8% is what we're expecting? And as a result of which, on the whole, FY24 sees a growth of what over last year? Yeah, I mean, I would uh, expect that uh, the quarter four uh, should be uh, at least a percentage better than what you've done in quarter three. It could turn out to be even better if some of the larger deals that we are chasing uh, come through. So on the whole, uh, we should be looking at about 16% plus in terms of uh, year-on-year uh, -year growth for the full year. And uh, as I said, I mean, uh, in general, we see that the momentum in the second half of the year is much better than what we saw in the first year. Uh, if some of the larger deals that we are chasing come through, uh, it could be even better. But of course, we now have only about two months left in this uh, last quarter. So it will depend on the timing of those deal closures as well. All right. So 16% is the, is the yearly revenue growth number, right? That's correct. And for next year, what kind of a revenue growth uh, are you looking at? And also give us some color on how the contract renewals are taking place. How, are, how is pricing being re uh, negotiated as of now? Right. I'll address the contract and, uh, renewals and the negotiations. Typically, most of the contract renewals uh, happen in the November, December, January timeframe. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we, uh, we have had uh, either uh, all of them, uh, I mean, most of them come through. And uh, whatever is uh, still pending, uh, they seem to be on course for uh, uh, getting completed as well. Uh, pricing has been uh, a tad uh, uh, more challenging in comparison to uh, what, we were, uh, uh, what we were hoping for. Uh, but obviously, given the current uh, uh, macroeconomic scenario, I, it's not surprising either right, that uh, we are seeing some pushback in terms of uh, uh, pricing uh, uh, increases right, that we can uh, shoot for. Of course, uh, we are also putting in more interesting uh, value propositions in front of mm. clients in terms of the initiatives that they can do, as well as uh, the models in which we can engage with them and operate. So uh, uh, that is also uh, food for consideration for many of our uh, clients and prospects 
and that is helping us uh, from a pricing and margin perspective as well. Uh, overall, uh, I would say that uh, the general uh, sentiment is more positive in comparison to what we were witnessing in the first uh, uh, half of the year. We are expecting that all of the renewal should get completed by uh, uh, Feb, mid Feb, Feb end. Uh, and and uh, right now, I would say that no, uh, we will uh, be on course for completing all of the renewals uh, without any challenges. Right. You you said that uh, pricing is a little challenging. Could you give us a sense of is it the price increases which are challenging, or is it uh, you know you are renewing contracts at a lower price than same time last year? I mean. Just give us a sense, in, in normal cases, what is the annual price increase and what is it likely to be now in this environment where you're renegotiating? Yeah, it's price increases, uh, really. Uh, we are not talking about any uh, reduction in prices at all at this point in time. Everybody is also aware of the fact that uh, interest rates have been high and uh, inflation has been high in the US. So it's not that the clients don't understand the context uh, and they are appreciative of the fact that uh, even our compensation and wage bill will go up in the US right on account of that. Uh, it's more about clients asking us for a little relief given other challenges that they are facing and uh, therefore keeping uh, prices at the same level or not going in for the, the increases now that we are shooting for. Typically, we would have done about 2-3% uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, increases on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, this year, uh, given the interest rates, we have been asking them for higher numbers, uh, but we are either holding to what we were charging them in the previous year or we are getting lower increases in comparison to what we are asking. So blended would be around anywhere between 0 to 1% or 0 to 2% by the end of February. Would that be a reasonable assessment? That's correct. That is for US-based roads. For uh, India-based roads, uh, we have always had uh, much better success, right, even in the past, uh, given the inflation rates and the interest rates that prevail in India. So overall, on a blended basis, I would say that uh, our pricing should help us uh, get better by 3% or so uh, from an overall uh, blended stand. All right, Rajan, what about m &A action? You're on the prowl, right? You all were looking at uh, some acquisition targets, and I believe that you all were in advanced stocks. Has anything uh, closed out? Will it get closed out? Should we hear something from you? And if yes, what could this quantum be? So that's right. I mean, uh, I have uh, mentioned earlier that uh, we are in advanced stages of discussion. We have progressed well on that opportunity. We are in the final uh, financial legal due diligence. And uh, if things go well, we could have uh, an announcement to make even in the next uh, six to eight weeks time frame before the end of this fiscal. Of course, I don't want to run ahead of uh, events and then uh, make any promises or uh, share any further details at this point in time. Uh, the general range of uh, targets that you've been looking at uh, is in the 10 to 20 million range. And uh, the one where we are in advanced discussion also falls within that range. So therefore, uh, this is from a revenue perspective, right? Uh, and and uh, obviously, uh, valuations and multiples uh, will be in line with uh, how much of their business comes from services and how much of it comes from products and IP. Uh, so that's what I'm able to share at this point in time. But hopefully, I'll have more news for you in the next uh, six to eight weeks time. So typically, five to six times uh, valuation is what we're looking at in terms of an EBITDA or a little more than that? Services, uh, the range tends to be more around three and a half to five. And of course, it is subject to what we see as trajectory, not only in terms of revenue growth, but also in terms of uh, what is the expected profitability range. Uh, for product companies, the expectations can be a little higher. Uh, and again, there are organizations where some of the revenue is non-linear coming from products and solutions. So we'll have to take a blended approach uh, if you're talking to such uh, targets. You said you won't promise anything else uh, to the st street ahead of uh, anything that happens. But... You will give us a promise that whenever you make that announcement, you join us here and tell us everything about it, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, without fail. <laughs> we look forward to that uh, date then, Rajan, uh, and we wish you well. It'll be quite an interesting acquisition as well that we are looking at, uh, but look forward to having a chat with you rather soon. Yep, 10 to $20 million is uh, the typical range that he's looking at with the three, three and a half uh, times multiple that he around. gives it. So, the, uh, fifth, yeah, about... Uh, 50 to 60 million dollars would perhaps be the sort of uh, acquisition price. We've done the math, but we will, of course, leave uh, Rajan to join in as and when that deal is announced itself. The stock slightly flattish right now, but uh, the management is confident of some recovery going forward in terms of.